So we are here with Katie Matthews with Be Mighty in front of this adorable little fee pantry. Katie, tell us about Be Mighty. Yeah, so my name is Katie Matthews. I'm the community wellness specialist for Be Mighty Little Rock. Uh, Be Mighty Little Rock is a city of Little Rock and Cal's program, uh, all dedicated to getting free meals to youth and families in Arkansas and a ton of other fun things that Be Mighty does like nutrition education, uh, food security resources like our free little pantries and uh, other, other programs like our Metro program that helps folks overcome the barrier of transportation to accessing uh, our free meals at, across our 11 Cal's library sites. So the free little pantries uh, were introduced in the summer of this year. We have seven across our library system. So there's one here at Children's that's kind of tucked away near uh, the garden and the back of the library. So if you're ever looking for it, we're at the corner of Madison and Maryland, I believe. <laughs> and that's where this one is at. We have uh, our six others. Two of them were previously existing. So our pantry at uh, Millie Brooks in Wrightsville, our newspaper stand uh, pantry at D. Brown. And then we have constructed these wooden cute little pantries here at Children's, at Terry, at Fletcher, uh, Nixon. as well as Nixon. They're so cute. Did you guys paint this? Who? Yeah, who so that? the group that painted this were through a program here at Children's. We all gathered down at the pavilion down there um, and they got to work painting this one. There's lots of fun fruits and vegetables painted on the sides. Um, there was an artist who painted our little pantry at Fletcher Library. Um, some of the other branches like Terry and Nixon, uh, staff took it upon themselves to beautify their uh, pantries so that they were appealing to, to all of our patrons. Okay, great. So obviously we're getting towards Thanksgiving, so we're just kind of like in that spirit of sharing more. Um, what, what kind of items are good for the pantry? I would say anything that is non-perishable, but we also, always are in need of hygiene items like feminine hygiene products, uh, dental hygiene products. Those are always really welcomed here. Um, but I would say things that are not, you know, cooked in your kitchen, um, leftovers, uh, things that will spoil. So really canned goods, things that are readily ready to eat like, uh, you know, fruits. Uh, now that it's cooler out, you can kind of add some hearty vegetables in here like onions, potatoes, those things will last now that it's cooler out. So we want all of our patrons who are putting into the pantry to use their best judgment um, and, and not putting things in there that will spoil too quickly. But I will say the turnover of the food in our pantries is really high. So in the summer, uh, we had a lot of concerns about heat, which is definitely something you would want to consider when donating. Um, but we had to assure our patrons that we check it frequently and that the turnover of the food is quite high. Um, most stuff is gone within a day, I would say. Oh, wow. That's, that's pretty quick. So there's definitely a need here for, for this. And I, I'm not sure, but I feel like we kind of have maybe two audiences that we're, we're kind of serving. We maybe yeah. have some, some unsheltered, so those, those ready-to-eat meals that mm -hmm. you were talking about, items um, that can just be taken and eaten on the go. Um, and then, you know, it is Thanksgiving. Yeah, so some staple pantry items, you know, beans, rice, canned goods, uh, you know, that canned cranberry sauce, things that people are going to want on their table. Um, but maybe inflation right now, the pandemic, things are tough. Um, and some people just might need a little bit of help plugging those key items into place um, and helping families in our communities create more balanced meals at home where, wherever we can. And the main thing that I love about the pantries is that it's really a way that our neighbors can help other neighbors to get the things that they need uh, for their kids, for their families, um, but in a judgment-free way. There, this is a stigma-free way. There's no people involved. We don't vet who is taking or giving from this, and we encourage you know, our staff and our communities to both give and take what they need. Great. Well, I did... I brought some items today oh, cool. to, to kind of fill up the pantry. So awesome. let's get these added. So I've got, I brought some stovetop. I've read a couple articles that stovetop is like really popular. And um, I don't know about you, but I need gravy. <laughs> um, I also have this, this is some little microwave rice that I thought was nice. It's already flavored, so it doesn't require a lot. And then some canned soup with that lid that pops right open. 
Yes, the pop-top cans are so beneficial for folks who may not have a can opener at home. But can openers are also something that are a great donation item. Not, not a lot of people think about it. Yeah. Um, and we have an upcoming drive with the UMS uh, College for Health. Uh, and they'll be donating a lot of food safety items like food thermometers, can openers, uh, bleach wipes, stuff like that to help people have all the things they need in their kitchen to cook a healthy meal. Great. And if um, somebody isn't able to get out and get to a pantry, is there another way that they could help? Yeah, so folks who may not live near a pantry or it's a little bit out of reach, um, folks can still participate. We have an Amazon wish list um, that will send all the items straight to our uh, base at Children's Library. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure it gets distributed um, to all the, right, all the right pantries across our system. All right. Well, thank you, Katie. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about the pantries. Yeah. And, um, you know, guys, I just encourage you to kind of help out and, and you know, feed a neighbor. Yeah, find a pantry near you, and I, I really encourage everybody to get involved.